Ideologies are truly a crucial part of Rise of Nations. Each ideology has its own bonuses that affect your gameplay in a positive way. Well, most of them do. Because of all these unique bonuses, there is the obvious question, which ideology is the best? Well, that's exactly what we're going to figure out today. To do this, we must first look at all of the pros and cons of each ideology and then give them a final ranking. For this video, I have grouped the three different ideology branches into one ideology. So this means that we will be comparing the communist tree, which includes socialism and communism, the democratic tree, which includes liberalism and democracy, and the fascist tree, which includes nationalism and fascism. Also, keep in mind that the best ideology for you all comes down to personal preference. So if I say that what you think is the best ideology is bad, don't get mad at me, please. This video is just a guide for people who aren't too sure what, what one is the best. So without further ado, let's start by looking at the pros and cons of each ideology branch. So first, let's look at the ideology that almost every nation starts off with. Non-aligned. So let's have a look here and- oh, there are none. Okay, well, what about this unique policy? Oh god, no! Ah yes, the communist tree. Now, the main pros for the communist tree are its increased factory and resource output, making it great for countries like Russia which have an abundance of resources. Now, along with tons of resources, communism and socialism both give extra manpower, which is why people usually spam infantry when they select it. Yeah, I'm looking at you, China. Oh, and it also gives other bonuses like reduced war exhaustion and less justification time, but they don't really matter as much. Okay, now there's only really one main con of the communist tree, and it's a reduction to tax income, which can be really bad, especially if you don't manage to sell consumer goods to America in time. Alright, next we have the democratic tree, which specialises in tax income as its main source of income. Tax is pretty much all that's good about the democratic tree, and the cons are pretty bad. All of the cons make it so that you can't really go in any offensive wars or have a big army. Then we have reduced manpower, higher military upkeep, longer justification time, and you lose stability on any offensive wars declared, which is just terrible. So yeah, only go down this path if you want to basically just be neutral the whole game, but still somehow be first on rankings. Or plays America and liberates Europe. Now last, but certainly not least, we have the fascist tree. Oh man. This tree is basically the complete opposite to the democratic tree, as pretty much all of its pros are affecting military. I mean, we've got extra manpower, lower military upkeep, lower justification time, and even gain stability on offensive wars. Oh, not to mention the extra justification slot for fascism, which is just nuts. There's only one con for fascism, and it's reduced tax, but it's not even too drastic, as it's only by 10%, unlike communism 25% decrease. So yeah. This ideology is pretty much all military, so if you want to be a militaristic powerhouse, this is the ideology for you. Now this is the part that everyone will get mad at me for. In third place, I'm going to have to put liberalism and democracy. Although the tax income is nice, I just think that not being able to easily have a military or declare war on anyone kind of defeats the purpose of the game. I mean, the whole point is that you get powerful by invading other countries, right? In second place, I've put socialism and communism, because I think it's too reliant on resources and trade for its income, and trade can sometimes not work and just resources alone I don't think can carry a whole nation. And all of its military bonuses get overshadowed by nationalism and fascism, which is in first place. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why it's in first. All of its bonuses are just so good, especially the reduced military upkeep, which can be so powerful if used correctly. So there we have it, the finished rankings of each ideology. I hope that this video has given you a clearer understanding of the ideologies in Ron and which one is best for you. This video is my biggest one yet, so I hope you enjoyed it, and you could maybe watch some of my other vids if you liked this one. All links to music I used and sources are in the description if you're interested. And with that, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.